I would like to thank Torontonians for their patience this weekend. Uh, I would like to thank uh, our local businesses uh, for their patience and their partnership with the City of Toronto and the people of Toronto. I would like to thank the employees of the City of Toronto who have been out cleaning up after this weekend's events and performed extraordinarily well on Saturday night after the violent acts. And I'd like to express my regrets to the business owners and the people who were caught up uh, in the violent activities over the weekend. I would also like to thank uh, the Toronto Police Service, who I believe did an extraordinary job in almost impossible circumstances. We were met this weekend with a number of people, uh, certainly several hundred, who wished to use the opportunity available to them during a peaceful democratic protest to commit violent acts. And there is absolutely no doubt whatsoever that these people planned these acts ahead of the weekend, came to Toronto simply because of the G20 to perpetrate violence. And I thought the Toronto Police Service acted with admirable professionalism in dealing with those violent protests and in dealing with people who were simply exercising their democratic right to free speech, but were caught in a situation that meant the police had to use extraordinary measures. I'd like to let Torontonians know that city staff are still and continuing to work with the federal government. There will be a post-mortem and a debrief conducted between our staff and the federal government to deal with issues like compensation for businesses affected, including people like employees who were forced to take time off uh, and who simply can't afford it. And of course, other issues that have been raised, uh, like the operations of the Integrated Security Unit, uh, will be part of that post-mortem. However, Toronto will be getting back to normal. City staff today are already out uh, cleaning the city and beginning to dismantle the security barricades. This week we have the Jazz Festival, which carried on all weekend. It's right here at Nathan Phillips Square and other locations. We have Pride on Sunday. We have the Tall Ships and July 1st celebrations. And for Torontonians who were concerned about the activities that we saw in our city, particularly on Saturday, I ask you, please enjoy your city over the next few days. The biggest message we can give to those people, those criminals who came to our city simply to commit violent acts is to say, we're putting you behind us. We're going to enjoy and thrive in our city. We're going to take part in the celebration of human rights that Pride is. We're going to take part in the Tall Ships Festival. We're going to enjoy the Jazz Festival right here at Nathan Phillips Square. And we are going to say as Torontonians that we've put this episode behind us. We're proud of our city and we're taking it back for ourselves. I'm happy to take your questions. If you can please use the microphone, as Stuart said. Mr. Mayor, um, hindsight being 2020, we knew there was going to be violence. If you were offered the G20 again next year, would you, uh, would you like that to come to this city? Well, I, I think you know my answer to that, Austin. Uh, but uh, let's remember, from the beginning, the city said that it would be appropriate to host this event at Exhibition Place, and that's for a simple reason. It's self-contained. And I think that certainly uh, would le have lessened the impact on Toronto, whether that would have prevented people who simply wanted to come to commit violent acts, I, I think is debatable, but it certainly would have uh, significantly lessened the impact on downtown Toronto. Uh, I don't think we should second guess uh, police decisions made in the heat of the moment because uh, they're aware of all of the information that exists at that moment of time. Uh, there were times when they did arrest people that you know, the general public wouldn't know about because they arrested them. There were times when uh, uh, the violent criminals uh, chose to conduct their acts. And it was very clear, I think, to everybody when the picture was on television of uh, a black hooded man with a small pickaxe. You know, you don't find that lying about on Queen Street. That was deliberate, that was planned, and that was violence. And I think uh, the fact that the police have arrested numerous of uh, people, and, uh, and I understand will be charging a number of people with criminal offenses, shows that they were doing their job as best as humanly possible, and I think we should support them. The Toronto Police, yet there are numerous accounts of uh, innocent people arrested, especially yesterday, there were pastors by, and there were uh, mixed up in things that happened. You support this? 
The, the uh, circumstances in which the Toronto Police found themselves uh, are almost impossible. On the one hand, they're obliged to allow people to, to peaceably assemble uh, and speak up on issues of democratic concern. And we all support that. Uh, there are many people in these, this room that have been in demonstrations. On the other hand, there were people deliberately using those demonstrations as cover to commit criminal acts. And the police were obliged, and I'm very supportive of them, and every Torontonian is, uh, to ensure that those, if people did commit criminal acts, they were caught, and that they did their level best to prevent them. That's the job of the police. And those people were hiding in the demonstrations. And they were doing it on purpose. Um, and uh, it makes the, the police role exceptionally difficult. And I think if we step back a moment and look at similar events around the world and go look at the coverage of events around the world when events like this are held and see what the police in other jurisdictions have done, and the only conclusion you can come to is that we have a police service that respects people's rights, that acts with incredible professionalism. You know, on a hot, sunny afternoon, to be in riot gear uh, with criminals uh, throwing rocks at you, and not a single police officer I'm aware of ever lost his professional demeanor. That's an extraordinary thing. That's because of their training, and I fully support their efforts. What do you think Toronto got out of the G20 at the end of the day? I expect too much international press about the Jazz Festival. But um, <laughs> the, uh, I, I think, first of all, this wasn't held here at Toronto's request. Uh, this wasn't held here because we wanted to promote our city. We did use the opportunity to promote our city, uh, and there was a significant... Uh, media interest before the event in the Toronto story, and we have an incredible story which we don't tell. We're too modest to tell it. You know, we, we have a superb business community. We have world-leading businesses. We're one of the leading cities in the world on environmental issues, uh, and we have people from around the world living here together in relative uh, peace and uh, in a spirit of social justice. And the world media before the summit were fascinated by that. Is it true? that uh, on Saturday and Sunday there would have been articles uh, in newspapers around the world about the violence perpetrated by uh, uh, those criminals? Yes. Is it also true that around the world uh, they would see this as something accompanying the G20? Yes, that's what happens. Very sadly, we had hoped it wouldn't hear, but uh, that wasn't to be the case. And I, I don't think uh, we should be too, too concerned about people seeing Toronto in a different light. Um, this wasn't held here to try and tell Toronto's story, we just used the opportunity and that's why I held a number of press conferences before the event to get that story out in review. They have a specific link uh, on their website for G20 related complaints. Uh, so for, uh, for people who are concerned and believe that their rights were not respected, um, I invite you uh, to uh, go to the website of the Office of Independent Review and follow the instructions expressed on uh, Saturday to the people of Toronto. I was saddened by, by the events and I was angered. You know, we have a city where people come literally from places where there's civil war and are on opposite sides of the civil war and live here uh, in relative peace, in relative prosperity, and in a city that values social justice. And a group of uh, thugs uh, came to deliberately commit criminal acts. That's the fact. And it took away from the message of people who were demonstrating about quite serious issues that they're passionate about, uh, you know, safe and legal access to abortion in developing countries, for example, uh, the fight against climate change, which uh, is uh, probably the number one issue the planet faces and, and was not uh, uh, apparently discussed by the G20 leaders. It, they, the acts of these uh, violent criminals who came here just to commit violence, and they boasted about it beforehand. Um, uh, caused uh, the scenes we saw on the weekend. And that was uh, unacceptable to me. I think uh, the police did their absolute level best to both control those activities and to allow people who wanted to express the democratic opinion, their opinions democratically to do that. And I, I think, uh, well, two things. First of all, we should be uh, thankful and supportive of the police. And if there were uh, uh, incidents that weren't appropriate, deal with them through the, the channels I've referred to earlier. Secondly, we've got a week coming up with fabulous events around this city. You know, maybe it's time we get out to those events and celebrate Toronto and put what happened over the weekend behind us and remember why we love this city and live here in the first place. It's a great city that welcomes people from around the world, that respects human rights, and is a place we can have fun. And let's move forward and do that. Let's have one more question.